this one already. Now we will talk about the microscope. What the microscope does for us? Actually, microscope is magnifying any one's image. Suppose we are not able to see any, we are not able to see definitely very tiny particles. But with the help of microscope, we are able to see its first image. In our daily life camera, whatever we are, we are able to see. In our TV, in our camera, all of you have the mobile phones. Whatever your size, we are able to see. But on that time, that the, in the case of microscope, very tiny per particles. Okay, have a look on the zoom. Whenever you are capturing the photograph in your mobile camera, on that time you are using the zoom. Zoom option you used definitely. So that one is similar to the microscope. That very small particle that its picture is being magnified to us. And one more thing I want to say you. See here the early microscope. And this is the modern microscope. So, the microscope is not being invented in a single day. In our prior age, on that time, prior day, they didn't know that which one is the microscope. How we can use day by day, it invented. So, the first microscope developed, that one was a optical microscope. In the year of 1590, Hans Lipresi and Jacarais Janssen, they developed one microscope. They used which microscope they invented on that time, that means developed, not invented. So, that they used one lens, but that one is not made of glass. One single lens was there and that one also was developed with the help of water drops. They used water droplets as the lens. And the water droplets, that one used to magnify the tiny particles into larger size. And that one's eventually, definitely, that one should be replaced. Because you know, nowadays, we use the different glass lens. So, that one eventually replaced by the different glass lens or any kind of different mediums also plasma or different things we use next the magnifies what the magnification magnification means any kind of small particle or small object its image should be first or big in size that one is the magnification so microscope is doing the same work that means it is also magnifying the small particle into big particle. So, and after invention of this instrument, what the scientist does actually, they are able to find now the different small germs just like the bacteria, protozoa, they are able to see them. Then afterwards they did the experiment, different kind of experiment they did and they are able to find out the disease. Which disease with the help of those bacteria and the protozoa, which disease they were, they spread. They spread, which disease they spread, they are able to find out the medicines spread by those diseases. So definitely this one is a very helpful instrument in medical science and uh, one more thing you can ask me that uh, what is the protozoa, what are the bacteria, these are very small germs. Protozoa is the single cell, you all of you know that the cell, what, what is the cell, the basic unit of our human body. Just like only one cell should be there, that one is a microscopic animals. One animal, which one is consisting only one cell, like that. So, these all are the different kind of wonderful instruments, which one we used in our medical science to improve the medical facilities. Now, I want to talk about the surgery. Sometimes, 
to cure the disease or to get repair. To repair any one of the body organs, doctors need to cut open the patient's body. On that time, that one is called the surgery. And they, after cutting, they are doing some performance there. They are doing some operation. So, which one need to be exact? Like that they do. So, that one is the surgery. Now, you may ask me that uh, what is the need of the surgery? Yes, there is a need of surgery because I have told you already that there are some disease with the help of only surgery we are able to get cure and we are able to make it perfect. Sometimes it happens. Surgery is performed with the help of different medicines and with the help of different medical instruments also or different medical equipment also. So in our days, that means in the present day, in our hand lots of instruments are available and in the prior time, that means in ancient time, on that time the barber surgeons, they used to perform different surgeries, do you know? They never had any uh, instrument and in, uh, proper medical equipment, they never had. But still they used to perform the surgeries. So definitely that task is not a very less task, that, that one is also very great task also. So all of you should know about them. And the first surgeon, that, that means the French surgeon, French surgeon, Ambroise Paré, he developed lots of surgery technique and on honor of that, he became the father of modern surgery. Do you know who was the father of the surgery? He was the father of the modern surgery. But who was the father of the surgery? He is Sushrutha. And he also was an a teacher of Ayurveda. And on that time, people believed that he performed lots of tasks on that days. That means in our ancient days, just like the cataract surgery, brain surgery, urinary stone surgery. So this kind of surgery he used to perform, he used to perform on that days. So that one is a very big task, very great task also. And he was in India for 2500 years ago. Can you imagine how old this story is? So definitely you have to learn about these two names. One is Sushrutha and another one is the Ambrosi Pare. So the father of surgery is being recognized with Sushrutha and the Ambrose Pare. He is known as the father of modern surgery. And one thing, in the year of 1536, the Ambrose Pare, he became the master of surgery. And nowadays, you know this one, that the surgery, different kind of surgery, just like the heart surgery, the kidney transplantation, the plastic surgery, these are very common to us. But in our ancient days, these are not possible. They do not have this kind of modern equipment along with them. They do not have the different kind of the father of the surgery is Shustratha and the father of the modern surgery is the Ambrose Pare. These two names you should keep in mind. And in the year of 1536, he became master surgeon of surgery. So nowadays the surgery is very common to us. Which kind of surgery we are doing now? Now we are doing the cosmetic surgery, the heart 
surgery, the kidney surgery or kidney transplant also. So this kind of surgery are very common to us now. But on those days, they didn't have any kind of proper equipment along with them. They used to save the people's life. And that story is 2,500 years ago when Shostrotha was to perform these different kind of surgeries. And because of the surgery nowadays, the human got the long lives also. With the help of those kind of surgeries, our life span it becomes more in our prior time on that time the, in the if you will see also in the british time on that time the average lifespan was only 19 years can you think and now it becomes 69 years so there is a very big development tremendous development in our medical science and there are also some incredible medicines which one now we are having with us to cure different kind of diseases, isn't it? So now I want to talk about the two incredible medicines just like the chloroform and the penicillium. So among these incredible medicines, we can name these two chloroform and penicillium. What the chloroform is doing? Chloroform is making us senseless. How is it possible? Actually, whenever we are inhaling the chloroform, on that time, it directly goes to our nervous system and it makes our nervous system disable. How is it possible? It is Controlling the controlling power of the nervous system becomes silent. That means when nervous systems means you can understand that our nerves, nerves, all the nerves of our body, our brain, our spinal cord, our sense organs, these all are including our nervous system. So our nervous system it becomes depressed with the help of this chloroform. So first you can understand about the, the working principle of chloroform. What it does actually. Then if we become senseless, so on that time doctor can perform different kind of surgery. It may, that means which surgeries are painful. So without application of chloroform, that one should be very painful for us. So in the, on that time, our sense organs become active. So that is not possible. Nowadays it is not possible. But in our prior time, they used to do this kind of surgeries. Do you know? This one is very painful also. And now I want to tell you about the discovery of the chloroform. First, the chloroform was invented by the Samuel Guthrie. So after discovery of the chloroform, the name chloroform, that one is fixed by Jean Baptiste Thomas. Yes, he named that substance as Chloroform. In the year of 1847, Sir James Young Simpson, look at him, look at him, he is Sir James Young Simpson. He first discovered about the anesthetic property of the chloroform and what, how we, they can use, we can use it as the medical purpose, in, as a medicine. So, first he have seen this one, he started about the substance and in the year of 1847, he told about the medicine or the substance to all of us and successfully he introduced it as the general medical use. That means that one is a medicine. We can use it as
our early days, in our prime time. So that one is too painful for us and with the help of this one we can perform very big operations also that means very big surgeries which doctor does actually.